The Ghosts in Deadwind Pass are one of the most requested mobs for this entire series, and I'll be honest with you, I have no idea why. Their loot tables are not crazy, but they are interesting. They have a decent amount of blues on them, but they're all at around a 0.04% drop rate, so that's pretty low. However, that doesn't change the fact that we all know Deadwind Pass is one of the final frontiers of classic World of Warcraft. It's a very cool zone with a lot of mystery behind it, and spoiler alert, the reason there's a lot of mystery is because it's unfinished. Deadwind Pass and Mount Hyjal, if you notice over here near, near Felwood, there's this little area with nothing in it, were both supposed to have a lot of content in classic World of Warcraft, you know, 16 whatever years ago. But TBC got announced, and, well, they had to push it back, and we got things like Karazhan in TBC and Mount Hyjal in TBC, but originally they were supposed to be in classic WoW. So this place has a lot of unused potential, but if you ask me, that actually makes it one of the coolest areas in the game. Again, because of that mystery. So today, with our Chromatic Sword and our Tiny Emerald Whelpling, as well as our Pirate Hat, we are going to kill 500 of the undead out here in Karazhan. I'm not going to break this up because I'm pretty sure there's a decent variety of undead back here. I mean, I looked it up and there's things like ghosts, you know, like normal looking ghosts, but I don't see them, so... We can go exploring around together. I've never been down here on Classic. You know, I've played for five five or so years, and I've never come down here. But, I mean, on Retail, I did all the time to try to get that fiery fiery horse mount or whatever. But in Classic, never once have I come down this ramp. So this is a first time for all of us. And let's see what we get from our first kill of an unliving resident. Six silver. Now, that's a... Seven silver, honestly. That's a chunk of silver right there. That's not horrible. For this, I am going to throw on my helmet... I'm going to throw on my helmet with some hit... What was... Wait a minute. What in the world? I can't... Just two dead guys hang... This guy's missing a foot. He's missing both feet. That's horrifying. What else can we... There's a cellar here. Whoa, giant. Okay. We'll do some exploring together. Like I said, I haven't really been around Karazhan, so... We'll do some exploring around here, see what's up with the ghosts. And, uh... Get some memories from Luigi's Mansion on the GameCube. At least, at least that's what I am. That's what I'm thinking of right now. That's what this is reminding me of. So, I did do my research on these mobs, and like I was saying, the only... The unliving residents and caretakers don't... Wow, this place is huge! Oh my god. This place is massive. Uh, they do have a very wide variety of loot. Things like potion and rune cloth, right? We should be getting a lot of. However, they do have some blues. But again, they're all at a 0.04 drop rate, so... That's crazy. But look at this. This looks like that cave you started in Skyrim. You know, that you break out of at the very start. Just massive cave, sweet. And I see a different looking mob down there, some sort of ghost, which means we're on the right track. We have to get to the bottom of this. So I'm not sure why so many people recommended this these mobs. Uh, it can't be because they're loot tables. So I figure it's just because they're very interesting, and I get that. They're, I'm having a lot of fun just like running around and exploring. Dead end here. I'm having a lot of fun just running around and exploring. Because there's no real reason to come down here in, in Classic. There will be in TBC, right? We'll be spending a ton of time in Karazhan, but... For now, in Classic, it's kind of like the last frontier. These Restless Souls and the Damn Souls do not have a crazy drop table as well. Just the same loot, rune cloth, silver, and... Uh, Maybe the occasional Four of Warlords or something like that. That'd be nice. Those are selling pretty well right now. This looks like a dead end over here as well. Yeah, let's turn around. I love how ghosts... Ghosts and basilisks. Wow, say that in the same sentence. Say ghosts and basilisks. Ghosts and basilisks were taking tests in the classes. Say that. Say that three times fast. Jesus. Anyway. Uh... What was I talking about? I just lost my train of thought. Oh yeah, ghosts and basilisks have my favorite death animations in the whole game. When the basilisks just like flip over, I love that. 
And when the ghosts, like, evaporate... God, that is driving me nuts. Ghosts and basilisks. Those words were not meant to be used in the same sentence. What's that? All attributes reduced by 29%. That's crazy. There's just something so epic about this, I feel like. Whoa! Speaking of epic, a 5 gold green. That's what I'm talking about, dude. Solstice, Staff of the Boar. Alright, I'm just gonna charge out of here. We gotta get out of this cave. Strength reduced by 80, stamina reduced by 80. That's nice. I think we can get out through this way. This is so bittersweet. Like, I'm loving this. Just running around and exploring. But part of me knows, you know, like, Naxxramas came out today. This this is probably one of the last times I'll, do, I'll get to explore something new in Classic. But let's go. Let's keep going around see what we can find. More mobs back here, so they obviously wanted us to come this way. There's like a little church building here. I definitely want to check out that church. And then there's some sort of graveyard. Yo! Totem of the Storm on Alliance! <laughs> Increased damage done by... Ow. Where did that thing come from? Increase damage done by Chain Lightning and Lightning Bolt by up to 33. How sweet is that, dude? I mean, too bad we're Alliance, but... Maybe I can make some money on that on the neutral auction house or something? <laughs> That's cool. A blue this early? I love it. Alright. Let's see what's going on in here. There's got to be something in this church worth looking at. Honestly, these, like, I'm seeing a lot of models that I'm not used to seeing. This little goblet thing. And then... Is this a, <laughs> a sink? Where else does this exist, dude? Can anybody else name me where one other sink in World of Warcraft is? What? They do their dishes in the church? That makes sense. <laughs> That's so... Oh, it's probably for communion or something, but... Then we got... A dead stone guy. And then his friend... Dead stone boy. F's in chat. Organs plot. Well, we have to check this out. Oh, it's gated off! Dude, how cool is this? We can't even go in. Let me in. Dude, that is so sick. I'm I'm like in awe right now. I am... 16 years later, there's still stuff that can blow me away in this game. Alright. Well, Rip Morgan. Let's see what's back here. It's crazy how, like, finished Karazhan looks from the outside. It, it's like, it's low, it's like the best... God, this is such a weird thing to say, but it's like the coolest tower in World of Warcraft, easily. And it's got, like, no point in the whole, you know, first expansion of the game. Classic. That's It's just insane. Yo, speaking of tower... Can we get in there? Oh, we can. We totally can. Oh, now we're talking. Crypts are cool, but towers? Towers are my jam. Oh, it's so nice. It's so cozy. And you can see everything. I can't help but feel like they wanted to make, you know, like they had some big idea for Karazhan and Classic. I mean, it's a cool raid, but maybe it was going to be like a neutral something. I don't know. Oh, look, we can go this way. Ah, this is the back entrance. I think they made this another way in on retail. You can actually go through this on retail. But on Classic, I didn't know it was here at all. If only we could go through. <laughs> Damn, TBC is right behind these bars, boys. I can't wait. 97.
98, the 1700 crit. 99 with a scroll of strength, and for our 100th Karazhan Undead, we'll go ahead and do a tanky Wailing Spectre. I'm gonna pull him into the room here, just because these guys spawn pretty weird. And I'll say right now that this is a pretty decent farm. I mean, I, I've pretty, probably gotten pretty lucky getting the Totem of Storm and like a major mana pot so far, but with the Anixia buff, these guys actually aren't too hard to kill. I mean, the Wailing Spectre is by far the tankiest, but... We somehow found ourselves down here in the middle of what looks to be like a wine cellar or something. So we're just going to keep chopping away and killing some undead. So hopefully we'll get some more loot. And I will talk to you guys when we're at 500 total kills. Let's get this going. Hundred and ninety net, four hundred and ninety nine Karazan undead. Later, we are here, where it all started at the cellar. I basically have just been doing loops all in, up and down the, I don't know what you would call this, town, <laughs> and in the cellar. And I gotta say, I'm tired. Honestly, this took a long time. This probably took like four hours in total. Uh, I took a lot of breaks, and I don't think this is gonna be the best gold per hour. But I do know that I really enjoyed this. I love this location, and it's kind of bittersweet. It really feels like one of the last places I'll ever really get to explore in Classic. But either way, we're getting attacked by our 500th Karazhan undead mob right now. So let's go ahead and kill him and check out the goods. No recklessness today, but we do have our execute up. So for our 500th unliving resident, we get... 5 silver, 77 copper. A lot of silver today, a lot of rune cloth, a lot of major mana pots, but I have to move all the loot first, so I will catch you guys in a little bit in Stormwind. Let's get right into this. We got 165 of the Unliving Residents, 93 of the Wailing Spectres, 90 of the Damned Souls, 79 of the Unliving Caretakers, and then 72 of the Restless Shade, as well as one Defiles Cut first, who I guess got in the way while we were flying there or something. I, I have no idea how that one got in there, actually. That's very weird. But either way... Love this loot today. Not the craziest amount of loot, but it's very pretty, right? Like, everything here is worth something. So, let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. We got one of my favorite items in the entire game, the Thorium Lockbox, which, spoiler alert, a couple videos ago, I did get the Transmute Earth... Or wait, I got the Transmute Undeath to Water recipe, which was worth 600 gold. Immediately sold that with a big smile on my face. 
as well as 352 pieces of rune cloth. You love to see it. I actually didn't even really realize how much rune cloth I was getting. This is a great amount. I thought it might actually be a little bit more, but 352 rune cloth. I don't think I can complain with that. The totem of the storm, our one blue of the day. Now, obviously, this isn't going to sell for that much on the Alliance Auction House, but I'm going to check it just for fun, and I'll probably end up putting this on the Neutral Auction House and just seeing what I can get over there. It's a bit of a shame, but kind of funny, honestly. So, whatever. Totem of the Storm there. Ornate Shield of the Tiger. Counselor's Tunic of the Owl. Dragon Finger of Fiery Wrath. This thing looks like it could be good, but I don't think it is, really. Solstice Staff of the Boar, and my baby, the Massacre... The Massacre Sword of Power. This thing looks so cool, if you ask me, dude. One of the cool looking, coolest looking swords in the entire game right there. And 50 attack power, Hunters, Warriors, Paladins. They'll be happy with that. So nice 3.8 speed as well. Really cool sword as far as greens go. I, I love this thing. I think it's awesome looking. So then we got all these venderables. So let's go knock those out. So we broke our record today, guys. 29 gold, 64 silver, 45 copper. Not quite 30 gold. I will be blown away if we ever do get 30 gold. But... 29 gold, 64 sil silver, I do believe that is a record there. So, when we add our venderables to this though, we get up to a nice cozy 41 gold, Safe 93 track. silver. That's what I'm talking about. That's some money, but it's not over yet. Let's go check out the auction house. Alright, start with the big stuff. Let's get this rune cloth out of the way, clean up our bag a little bit. One, four, one gold and 47 silver today. That's not horrible. Guys, I know I could make rune cloth bandages and stuff, but I just want to sell it all on the auction house for the sake of the video. So let's throw all these up right now. Last of the rune cloth. Totem of Storm. A hundred, what? A hundred gold? Maybe, I mean, maybe somebody else will buy it and then like move it to one of their alts because everybody's got 50 billion tunes these days. So maybe this could actually sell. Put it up for 80. Five gold for the rest of these crappy greens. Maybe I'll do more on this wand here. We'll do 49. I know it's a lot, but mages are rich. Mages are rich. When it comes to mage items, I don't skip. Uh, I could just vendor this for 5 gold. So I'll put it up for 6 because I think that's funny. Massacre Sword of Power. 10 gold on that bad boy. That'll make somebody very, very happy. Let's get these scrolls out of the way. Somebody in the comments let me know that these scrolls actually aren't that useless because people use them to cover up their good buffs when they're going to raid. Just in case they get dispelled, it'll dispel off like this crappy spirit buff instead of something useful like the Onyxia buff or something. So I think this is pretty cool. Then we got these potions here, which, dude, seven major mana pots. That's actually insane. At 250 a pop, we're looking at 14 gold apiece. I know on some servers, people are saying these are going for as much as six gold, somebody said in a comment. So if, you, if your major mana pots are selling for, you know, six, seven gold on your server... This could be a great alternative to having to buy something, you know, you just go out there and farm them yourself. So we're looking at about 17, 18 gold from all these major mana pots on my server where they're super, super cheap. But that leaves one last thing, the most hype thing, the Thorium lockbox. Let's get it open. All right, inside the Thorium lockbox to wrap up the loot, we get... Oh, the pattern for the bright cloth pants. You see that little recipe sign? Your heart starts racing. At least mine does ever since... That transmute but that's gonna do it for me guys if you're looking for a nice farm just to go explore the world get a really big change of scenery and something that I don't think a lot of players experience I would head over to Karazhan and kill some undead however be warned it's not the greatest gold per hour I'm not gonna lie to you guys but that raw gold rune cloth and all those potions are really interesting and hey maybe you'll get a purple out there they're high level mobs so it could be a really good one anyways I'll leave my twitch up on screen now guys if you have any ideas at all for mobs to kill, please let me know in the comments. I don't care how crazy or how low level or how worthless or whatever. Leave it in the comments. Some of the craziest ones end up being the most fun. So keep the recommendations coming. I love it and I really appreciate it. And also, real quick, real quick, I want to take a second to say thank you very much for watching. Thank you so much for the likes. Thank you so much for the comments. And just thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it and I'm going to keep pumping these out. So once again, thank each and every one of you for watching. I really do appreciate it. So... That's going to do it for me, guys. Good luck on your farms. If you're looking for a crazy gold per hour, maybe don't head over to Karazhan, but if you're looking for an adventure, I wish you good luck on your drops over there. So take it easy, guys. My name's Barack H. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.